Hey team, welcome to another Building Better Baseball timeout. And in today's timeout, we're going over base running rules. We're going to go over all the rules that have to do with running the bases, the baselines, the actual bases itself, scoring, and everything that's involved with base running. Remember, I'm Coach Hart, and in these timeouts, I teach you the rules of baseball, and I teach you how to play the game. So let's get into base running rules. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the baseline itself. There are four baselines in baseball. The baseline is the imaginary line between the bases, and there's a total of four. There's a baseline in between all four of the bases. The baselines between first and second, so first base and second base, and second and third, second and third here, are invisible. So there's no actual visible line that you can see to mark the baseline. The white foul lines between the corner bases and home plate are visible. So the white chalk lines that mark the foul line, that is the actual baseline that you can see in between third base and home and first base and home. So the corner bases and home plate, you can see those, but the ones in the middle of the field, you can't see those. The defense is allowed to occupy any space on the field to make a defensive play. So the defense has the right of way basically anywhere in the baseline or on the field in order to make the play on the ball. The runner must work around the defensive player. So as you can see, this player is here. If this player was running in the baseline to field the ball, this runner would either have to stop and go around. They would have to do something to avoid the defensive player. The runner cannot intentionally interfere with the defense. So if this base runner intentionally ran in front of this player trying to make a play, they would be called out for interference. So anytime that there's a base runner running from one base to another base and there's a defender trying to make the play on the ball, the defense has the right of way and they can occupy any space on the field to make a play. So the runners have to give way to the defense in order to let them make a play and they don't get called for interference. So there's something called a base path, and this is different than the baseline, and we'll explain why. A base path is only created when a tag is being attempted by the defense. The base path is the line from the runner to the base that they're running to with three feet on each side. So as you can see here, the runner is running to the base. The base path is only created if this player is trying to tag the runner. And if they're trying to tag the runner out, the runner has a base path which is created from a straight line from him to the base with three feet on each side. So if the runner tries to avoid the tag by running outside of that three feet area, then they would be called out. If the runner runs out of this path to avoid a tag, they're out. So as I said, the base path is different than the base line. So this white chalk line, that is the base line. That never changes. The base path is created only when there's a tag play and as soon as that defender is trying to tag the runner, the base path is created from a straight line from the runner to the base with three feet on each side. And if they leave that area, then they would be called out. The base itself. So in order to be safe, the runner must have a part of their body touching the base. They can have any part. So as you can see, this runner has their shoe on. You could have your knee, your hand, your elbow. If any part of your body is touching the base, then you are safe. If the runner loses contact with the base, they can be tagged at any time, except when time is out. So at any time when the runner loses focus and they step off the bag and the player has the ball, they can be tagged out if they're not on the base. The only time that this can't happen is when time is out. When the umpire calls time, the runner is allowed to step off, tie their shoe, get something out of their eye, anything like that. But if the play is going, if time is not out and they lose contact with the base, then they can get tagged and they will be out. First base. So first base is the only base that you're allowed to run through and still be safe. So as you can see, this runner right here is running through the base. You're allowed to do that on first base. After you hit the ball, you can run as fast as you can and hit the bag and still run past the bag. And if you beat the throw, then you are still considered safe. Safety bases are used for youth leagues. So as you can see this picture right here, there's an orange base. If you ever see an orange base next to first base, that's called a safety base. And those are used in most youth leagues in order to just create more safety where the defense can use the white bag on the field to catch the ball and the runner can step foot on the safety base in order just to create more safety so nobody's foot gets stepped on or anything like that. So if you ever see an orange bag on a field at first base, that's called a safety base, and that's just for the runner when they're running from home plate to first. If you make an attempt towards second base, then you can be tagged out. 
So this is the one time where you can be tagged out when you run through first base. So if you're running through, running through, you run through the bag, and maybe you see like an overthrow or anything like that, and you make an attempt towards second base, like you're gonna run to second base, you are now a live player and you can get tagged if you make that attempt to second base. If you don't make an attempt, basically you run through the bag and you see the overthrow and you just turn towards the side and you walk back to first base, you cannot get tagged, you won't be out. But if you make an attempt like you're gonna run to second base, you have to get back to first base because after that, you are now a live player and you can be tagged out. Second base. So second base is in the middle of the field, so your head must be on a swivel. So you have to look at so many different things and worry about so many different things around you when you're on second base. So at second base, you have to be aware of the outfield behind you, all three outfielders behind you. You have to be aware of the middle infield next to you. So as you can see in this picture, the shortstop is right behind this guy on second. The second base is off the picture, so you have to be aware of where they're playing to see how far off the base you can get and the pitcher and the hitter in front of you. So the pitcher is gonna pitch the ball, you have to watch the pitcher to make sure you don't get picked off, and you have to watch the hitter to see if they hit the ball where they hit the ball. So you have to be aware of things in front of you, to the side of you, and behind you. So second base, your head has to be on a swivel because you have to be paying attention to all sorts of different things. This is the first time that you're in scoring position. So in scoring position, what that means is that you are able to score, you're in a position and you're able to score on one hit. So basically, if the hitter hits it into left field or gets a hit into the outfield, you are able to score in one hit. That's what's called being in scoring position. Third base. You're one base away from scoring. So at third base, you have to be aware of where the defense is playing and past balls. So as you can see in this picture, the infield looks like they're playing in. When you're running on third base, you have to be aware of that because if there's a ground ball, whenever the infield is playing in, they're going home to try to get you out. So if there's a weak ground ball and you're not forced, you're probably gonna stay on third base. You're not gonna run. So you have to be aware of where the defense is playing. Also, pass balls. If there's a pass ball that gets past the catcher, you're able, when you're on third base, you're able to run home and score on that pass ball. So you have to be aware of those two different things. Be sure to stay in foul territory if a batted ball is hit towards you. So this is important. When you are leading off of third base or when you're going off of third base, make sure you stay in foul territory in case the batter hits the ball at you. If you get hit with the ball and you are in fair territory, then you are out. But if you get hit with the batted ball and you're in foul territory, then it's just a foul ball, nothing happens. So you wanna make sure that you always stay in foul territory because if a batted ball comes at you, you don't wanna be called out if the ball hits you. And last thing to think about on third base, when there's less than two outs, you have to be ready to tag up. So if there's a long fly ball in the outfield, you have to get back to the base and you have to tag up. As soon as they catch that ball, you're sprinting home. Home plate. So home plate is where the magic happens. You score, right? Most youth leagues have a mandatory slide rule if a play is happening. So in most youth leagues, you are required to slide. It's a rule that you have to slide if the ball is coming into home plate and there's a play happening. If there's no play happening and the ball just got crushed into the outfield and you can stroll on home, you don't have to slide. But most youth leagues, if there's a play happening, there is a mandatory slide rule where you have to slide. To score, you only have to touch the plate. So this is another base where you can just run straight through. You can run all the way to home and all you have to do is touch home plate. And as long as you touch home plate, you score. You don't have to stay on there for a certain amount of time or anything like that. As long as you touch home plate with any part of your body, then you score, that's a run. Scoring. So if the third out of the inning is a force out, no run can score. So basically, if there's bases loaded and there's two outs and there's a high fly ball in the outfield and the runner on third and the runner on second both come around to score, as long as that outfielder catches that ball for the third out, then no runs score because that's a force play. So whenever the third out is a force play, no runs score. If the third out of the inning is not a force play, then all the players who touch home plate before the third out is made counts as runs. So let's say an example. Let's say that there's a rundown between first and second. There's a runner caught in between first and second, and the defense is throwing the ball back and forth, almost like a pickle, right? There's a runner on third. If that runner on third goes home and scores before that runner gets tagged out, then that run counts as a run because the third out was not a force play. It was a tag play. So whenever the third out is a tag play and it's not a force play, 
All runs that score before the third out is made count as runs. Leading. So leading is basically stepping off the base before the pitcher pitches. It's almost like a head start in baseball. And as you can see in this picture, this is a lead, right? And leading is beneficial just because you're closer to the next base. But you always have to be aware when you're leading because as we talked about before, once you leave the base, you're able to be tagged out. But this is a rule in baseball where you are allowed to lead off the base in order to get a head start towards the next base. Leading in baseball happens at various ages, depending on specific leads. I actually looked up these rules before I did this video, and I saw so many different rules, so many different age groups, and depending on which specific league, which specific age, all sorts of different rules on when you can lead or not. So I couldn't really say anything specific on what age or league or anything like that, but just know that they all happen at various levels, so eventually players are allowed to lead off the base once they get to a certain age or a certain league. Base runners can lead at any time. So there's no set time when you can get off the base and when you can lead off the base. You can do it whenever you want. The pitcher does not have to be on the rubber. The pitcher doesn't even have to have the ball. As long as time is not out, if time is out, then you have to get back to the base. Nothing can happen. But if the game is going and time is not out, you're allowed to lead off the base at any time that you want. Stealing. Stealing is advancing to the next base without a batted ball. So as you can see, this runner is running from second to third. They are stealing the base when the ball is not hit. So a player can steal at any time besides when time is out. So there's no set time, just like leading, there's no set time when you're allowed to steal and not allowed to steal. As long as time is not out and the umpire hasn't called time, you're able to steal whenever you want. Obviously, for strategy reasons, you want to take advantage of those steals because if the pitcher is looking at you, it wouldn't be a good time to steal because the pitcher can just throw you out, right? So you have to pick and choose when the best time to steal is, but you are able to steal at any time that you want. There's no set time where you have to steal. The upside to stealing is you're closer to scoring, right? You just advance the base without putting the pressure on the hitter to hit you over, right? The downside is you make an out. So instead of advancing the base, you make an out and you're off of the bases and the hitter now doesn't have anybody on base to hit around. So there are upsides and downsides to stealing. It's all about speed and strategy when it comes to stealing. Thanks for taking the time out with Building Better Baseball. If you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm here every week with a brand new video to help you level up your game. And like we said before, I'm Coach Hart, and in these timeouts, I teach you the rules of baseball, and I teach you how to play the game. I hope you like this base running video, and I'll see you in the next timeout.